everybody, welcome to our lecture video for section 7.4, uh, which is about problem solving with percents. So this is going to be a really fun section where we do a lot of nice location problems or word problems and should be a pretty good time. Uh, the first ones that we're going to do are actually really closely related to those is of what questions that we had in section 7.3. It's just putting them in context. Uh, so let's start with that, but you're going to notice those is, of, and what um, keywords in some of these uh, questions that we're doing right now. So my first one says, Mr. Bucharan, the principal of Slidell High School counted 31 freshmen absent during a particular day. If this is 4% of the total number of freshmen, how many freshmen are there at Slidell High School? So you guys notice these, this is 4% of the total number of freshmen. We're noticing those keywords again. So let's talk about what are those referring to. Uh, the first thing I notice is if this, that refers to something that we just had, the 31 freshmen. So that 31 freshmen is, that's a keyword for an equal sign, 4% of, so there's my multiplication, the total number of freshmen, and then says how many freshmen are there? So that's my unknown quantity, so that'll be my x, is the number of freshmen at Slidell High School. So now that I have it set up, it's not too bad to solve. I'll convert 4% to a decimal, so then I'm going to have 31 equals 0 0.04 times x, and then to solve for x, I'll divide by 0.04 on both sides. And 31 divided by 0.04 is 775. So I'm going to have 775 equals x. So what does that mean? That means that there are 775 freshmen at this high school. The nice thing about word problems is that you can double check that this answer actually makes sense. So if you're at a high school, and 31 students are absent, would it make sense to have 700 freshmen total? Well, it's a lot more than 31, so that's a good start. It would be strange if I got a number less than 31, wouldn't it? If I have more absent than the total number of freshmen. So I wouldn't like an answer that's more than 31. And it's only 4%, which is a pretty low percentage. It's a lot closer to the zero than to 100. Uh, so I would think that that's a really small number compared to the total number. Uh, and so in that way, it does make sense. So these are things that you can double check uh, to make sure that your answer actually makes sense after you do it. Let's do another one. Sean took a 45 question test and got 40 questions correct. Approximately what percent of the questions did he get correct? So I'm noticing those keywords again. So what percent? So that's my unknown. So I've got x percent of the keywords, of the questions. Uh, so of the total questions, did he get correct? So the total number of questions was 45. So this will be x percent of 45, so times 45. Did he get correct? So even though it doesn't have the word is, um, it's actually equaling the number correct, which would be 40. So that's my starting equation. If I want to solve for x, I'll just divide by 45 on both sides. And 40 out of 45 should probably remind you of what looks, what things look like on your test sometimes after you take one. 40 questions right out of the 45 total. Um, and then to get your percent, all you've got to do is divide. So 40 divided by 45. And you're going to get 0.8 repeating. So your calculator is going to say like 0.88888 and it's going to keep on going. Uh, so if I want it to be rounded to the nearest percent, I would need to move my decimal place over two spots. So that would be 88.8 .8 repeat, which would round up to the nearest percent. So this would be approximately an 89% on his quiz. Okay? Or his test, sorry. If you needed to round to the nearest tenth of a percent, then this would be 88.9% if you needed to round to the nearest tenth. Because again, that eighth is bigger than five, so it's gonna round up, okay? 
The next one says a basketball player makes an average of 68% of his free throw attempts. If he made 11 free throws last night, how many attempts did he have? Well, I noticed my keywords up here. So he makes an average of 68% of his free throw attempts. So the amount that he makes is 68% of his free throw attempts. Okay, that's what we have from that first sentence. He made 11 free throws last night. So I know that this makes was 11. So 11 is how many he made equals 60% times the number of attempts, which is the unknown in this case. That'll be our variable. Let's see here, 68% as a decimal is 0.68. And then to solve for x, I would just divide by that on both sides. I'll divide by 0.68 on both sides. 11 divided by 0.68, uh, you're going to round it to the nearest whole number uh, because you can't make a fractional amount of free throw attempts. Um, so rounding that to the nearest whole number, you're going to get about 16 attempts. Okay. So sometimes with word problems, you have to think about the context. Um, and what you should be rounding to. So you can't have a decimal number of throws or attempts here. Uh, we do need whole numbers, so that's what you need to be rounding to. In a certain class, 32% are nursing majors, 16% are education majors, 24% are business majors, 8% are computer science majors, and 20% are undecided. If there are 25 students in the class, how many are education majors? So we have a lot of information and we actually don't need everything that's in here. So the only information I need is the total number of students. And it asks about education majors, so I only actually need this piece of information out of all of it. 16% are education majors. So that means that 16% of those 25 students equals the education majors. So 16% of the 25 students in the class equal the number of education majors in the classroom. Now that I have it set up, I can solve it. 16% uh, as a decimal would be 0.16. So now I've got 0.16 times 25 equals x. And if I do 16 or 0.16 times 25, the number of education majors is going to be four. There will be four students who are education majors in this class. Okay. So hopefully you see from these four examples how to find those is, those of, those what, um, keywords to make an equation and then how to solve that equation. The next thing that you're gonna see in this section is percent increase and percent decrease. And in case you're wondering, how will I know if I need to use this? It will say it in the problem. It will say, what is the percent increase? What is the percent decrease? Okay, so it's quite obvious that these are, these are important keywords in these problems and it tells you what kind of problem you have. So let me tell you how to solve these. Um, there's two equations. There's one for percent increase and one for percent decrease, um, and they're not too terrible. So to find percent increase, what you're going to do is you're going to do the amount of increase on top. Now to find the amount of increase, you just do the final amount minus the original amount. The final will be bigger. Original amount. Um, so you just subtract the two, and it'll always be bigger minus smaller. Um, but you find the difference up here. You find how much it increased by, and then you take that amount and you divide by the original starting amount. Now, when you get this, you, you will get a decimal and you do need to convert it to a percent by multiplying it by 100% to go from decimal to percent for your answer. 
percent decrease is incredibly similar. Uh, you're still going to find the amount of decrease. It's just that it started as a larger amount than it ended. So you're going to do the original amount minus the final amount because it's still going bigger minus smaller. You don't want uh, negatives because the increase or the decrease is telling you if it's increasing or decreasing. Um, we're not going to get negative percentages on either of these, okay? So original amount minus the final amount, and you're still dividing by the original amount. Um, just like the percent increase, you're going to get a decimal that you need to convert to percent. So you'll multiply that answer by 100% to get it as a percent. All right, so let's do a couple examples. Uh, example five says, in a survey taken two weeks ago, 146 students said they would vote for Megan for class president. Today, 163 students said they would vote for her. What was the approximate percent increase in the number of students voting for Megan? So again, the percent increase is your keyword that we're finding the percent increase. So once you get that in mind, you know I need to use this equation. So we're doing final amount minus original amount. Well, the final amount was 163 students. The original amount was 146 students. And we're gonna take that difference and divide by the original amount. Uh, the starting amount from our surveys was 146. And once you get that as a decimal, we're gonna multiply it by 100% to change it to a percent. So first off, the subtraction, 163 minus 46 is 17. And if you do 17 divided by 146, you're gonna get about 0.116438, and it'll continue. Um, to convert it from here to a percent, we'll move our decimal places two spots over, and then we just need to know what to round to. So if I'm rounding it to the nearest percent, that would be 11.6, which would round it up to 12. So that would be about 12% if you want it rounded to the nearest percent. If you want to round it to the nearest tenth of a percent, we'd have 11.6 and that four would round down. So that would be about 11.6% if you want it rounded to the nearest tenth. The nearest hundredth would be 11.64 because that three would round down. So you'll pay attention to what my math lab asks for with your rounding. All right, next one is the value of a share of stock dropped from $120 to $82. What was the approximate percent decrease? So there's our keyword again, in the value of the stock. And it says round to the nearest 10th of a percent. Okay, so now we know what to round to, which is always helpful. We have this keyword of percent decrease, which means we're gonna use the percent decrease equation. So in the percent decrease equation, we do original minus final. So that would be 120 minus 82 over the original amount. It started at $120, okay? And then we'll take that answer and we'll multiply it by 100% to get it as a percent. So first off, if we do our subtraction, 120 minus 82 is 38. If you do 38 divided by a uh, 120, you're going to get about point one, but goodness, point three one six with the six repeating. That's what you're going to get. So if I'm rounding it to the nearest tenth of a percent, if I move that decimal place over two times, I'm going to get 31.6, and it's going to be a lot of sixes repeating like this, okay? And then I need to round it to the, the nearest tenth. The six next to it round is bigger than five, so it's gonna round up. So this is gonna be approximately 31.7%. All right, hopefully this helps you guys, and I hope you all have a wonderful week.